Hi, my name is Ariel. I'm a secular progressive homeschooler and my sister Helen and I run Mint and Bloom, where that's the channel you're on right now, so you maybe knew that already. Um, but Helen is the face of our TikTok and most of our social media accounts, um, but uh, she's a lot better at it than me, as you can probably see already. Um, but I'm here to do for you a walkthrough of our brand new American history curriculum. It's called Power of the People. It's a full year of uh, history lessons based on this book, um, which is called Rad American History A to Z by Kate Schatz and Miriam Klein Stahl. And um, a lot of people have asked us like, how can I get a better sense of what's in your curriculum? And so I thought, well, I better do a kind of more in-depth walkthrough of what's actually in um, in the pages that we made that we're trying to sell to you. Um, so that was a weird way of saying that, but I don't want to pause the video. This is like my third time to start. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see um, what's inside our curriculum. Okay, let me do that now. Okay, I got the camera turned around and I'm gonna show you what's in our curriculum. Uh, but first, let me say, there are, in the download when you buy Power of the People, um, there's many ways for you to print and store this stuff. You don't have to do um, what I've done here with, I have a binder for teacher pages and a binder for student pages. Um, you can just print the handouts you need for the kids five minutes before you actually do them and keep the teacher pages digital. Um, you don't have to go to the trouble of doing this, but I know a lot of you um, really like to have everything laid out ready to go for you um, during the summer. So that's why we're using these this version for this walkthrough. So for the teacher pages, and uh, I'm gonna try to go quick here because Helen is currently making an in-depth how to teach these lessons um, video that'll be up on YouTube also and TikTok, I think, um, or maybe just YouTube, I don't know. But anyway, she'll go through more of like the layout of a lesson, but just so you can see, the teacher pages all have the same layout, which is where we, a brief thing about what you're learning this today or this week or however often you're teaching these, um, tells you the pages in the book to read tells you an overview of the activities that are included in the student pages. We give you a video that's related to um, what you've learned, what you're gonna learn or read about this week. We give you a discussion question. All of this is only in the teacher pages, so you'll have to communicate that to your kids. And the links are clickable, so you can, if you keep these digital, you don't have to type this into your search bar. You can just click the link and it'll take you there. Um, every teacher page on the back has supplemental learning. Maybe you have kids that are ready to go a little deeper. Um, maybe you have kids that uh, you're in a state that requires you to have like really tangible handouts um, and not just art activities to prove that you've learned what you've learned that day. Um, so we make a comprehension and critical thinking handout for every lesson that's got vocabulary, review questions, a critical thinking question, and ideas for further research. We tell you who the spotlight is on that, that week. It's a person that was mentioned in the chapter. We give you additional learning resources for them, so you can go deeper into that person. And then we always have a note to the teacher. Um, sometimes these are bonus activity ideas, or sometimes they're something that we wanted to point out that's not in the chapter um, that you should know and might want to communicate to your students. Um, there's lots of different, and sometimes it's just additional resources for you. Uh, so, oh, and then the teacher pages have, of course, an answer key that goes with the vocabulary and review questions on the comprehension and critical thinking worksheet. So you'll see every page in the teacher um, document follows that same format, right? We've got the same stuff for each of our lessons um, there. So Helen, as I said, is gonna give you an in-depth walkthrough of why the why is for youth climate movement. So um, that'll do more about explaining this stuff than I'm going to today. Okay, let's look at the, because 
a lot of people have asked us like, what if I have a kid who's not into art? I know that your activities are art-based um, and will they enjoy this curriculum or should I look elsewhere? Um, I think that there is enough in here that would keep most kids engaged. Um, we did trial this in our own community with kids, some kids that didn't like art and they were active in the conversations and um, seemed to get up a lot out of it as well. Um, but only you can decide if it's right for your kids. So I'm gonna do kind of a quick walkthrough of the lessons. I'm gonna really try to be quick. I, this is my second take on this and I was 10 minutes in on letter C, so that's not gonna fly. I'm gonna skip A because I've talked about it a lot in other, um, in another video that's on TikTok. Uh, and I can, I don't know, maybe we can find a way to link that here. Um, but there's, these are the pages where a kid can uh, reimagine Alcatraz Island just as the indigenous activists did. Um, they can think up a new use for it. And here's the critical thinking and comprehension worksheet. And here's the spotlight that has a bio and it has a quote. Um, so, oh yeah, and I should mention that the critical thinking questions um, in the back of this uh, is rock trash sheet. You don't have to write that down. Um, the, these could also be discussion topics. They're more um, complicated, more in depth, I would say, than the discussion questions we include in the teacher pages. Um, but they could be another bonus thing that you just discuss instead of if a kid really hates writing. Um, and then the ideas for further research have more ways for kids to go, students to go deeper. Okay, so that's A. B, um, B is a little bit of a special lesson because we have differentiated it a little bit um, based on, we have two different books recommended um, one for younger and one for older students. Um, but the activities we think all ages could do. So we have one where they can, um, like Alicia Garza did in Oakland uh, with permission from a shoe store, you can decorate the shop windows with a Black Lives Matter message. You can design a hoodie and learn a little bit about racial profiling um, on this page. You can, we have in the teacher pages an overview. There is a special call out section in the Black Lives Matter part of our book um, about Colin Kaepernick. Let me see if I can quickly get to it. Um, yeah, about Colin Kaepernick. So the, the main pages, you know, you could just read that chapter or you can do both. And the Colin Kaepernick pages go into um, what happened when he spoke out about um, police brutality. Uh, so you can do this activity that is inviting you to learn a bit about some of the problems with uh, football, which is America's most popular um, sport, and then design a different one, a new sport to be America's new favorite. And this involves rolling a die and picking um, a ball for your sport, the equipment used in your sport, uniforms used, the players who will play the sport, what the goal looks like, what the arena um, is for this sport. And then you put all that information together into an illustration of your sport and you give your sport a name. Um, here is the comprehension and critical thinking page and here's the spotlight page. Okay, C is for Cumby River Raid. Um, it's pronounced Cumby rhymes with Gumby if you're not from that part of the country. This is one of our favorite uh, stories in American history. So I'm super excited that it's highlighted in our textbook. Um, for this one, we invite kids to make extra hard flashcards. Um, so there's so many incredible details in uh, this Cumbie River Raid story. And we call some of them out in these flashcards and we invite kids to make an illustration on the answer side of the flashcard. And then they can use them to test the adults or trivia buffs in their life. And we think that you'll be able to stump them with these questions, uh, but it's super fun. And then we leave a blank one for kids to do a little bit of their own research and come up with their own extra hard flashcard. Here's the comprehension sheet. Here is our spotlight on Harriet Tubman. D is for declaration of sentiments. 
one thing I love, let me just say really quick, this book is so well written and I, you know, when I was reading through it for the very first time, I got to uh, thinking about using it uh, for our American history curriculum. I got to D is for Declaration of Sentiments and I was like, oh, there's no way that this one's going to be interesting. But they did make it, I mean, it's so well written and it, even stuff that you're like, ah, that's going to be a slog. It was actually, maybe, maybe you're not as jaded as I am, but um, I was pleasantly surprised by how engaging the writing is in that book. Um, and I loved learning about Declaration of Sentiments and our kids did too. We have a really fun um, activity to make a protest plate um, based off of a, a newspaper article, a line from a newspaper article about women who were um, fi fighting for the right to vote and for the right to be treated as equals, more, more importantly, um, in that, in that, at that time. Um, but the quote was, if our ladies will insist on voting and legislating, where gentlemen will be our dinners? And so we invite kids to make a message in food in response to that um, quote. And we have kids invite them to, uh, this one's gonna seem a little bit intense maybe, but make a list of the things that you are not happy about in your country right now. Um, that's what they did in the Declaration of Independence. Uh, they had 27 things that they were upset about, and that's what the women in, who wrote the Declaration of Sentiments did. Um, and so think about it now. What are some issues that you have with the country? And it's not just to be negative. It's because one of the first steps to making change is to identify the problems. We have a wage gap page that invites kids to see how much money um, women, black women, and Latina women earn compared to white men here and men in general here. They color the dollar bill up to the dotted line, and that's a, a graphic refer representation of this dark inequality in, in wages. Here's our, um, you know it, you've seen it, comprehension, critical thinking, and spotlight. E is for Earth First. Okay, I'm at 11 minutes. Should I pick up the pace? I probably should. Um, Ease for Earth First is about a group of, that protected the redwood trees in um, Northern California. And we invite people to make a tree protector costume based on the way that um, some of the protesters would dress as spotted owls. Um, so you can imagine yourself perched in a tree and give yourself a costume uh, that would be fitting for something we say what do you look like? Are you a forest sprite, a fairy, an angry squirrel, um, or whatever you can think of? We have a, they would use giant protest puppets. So you can make a big giant design of a puppet that's on sticks um, held up by, by a whole crowd of people that would float above the protesters' heads. Uh, we learn about Julia Butterfly Hill, who lived 100 feet up um, in one of the redwoods to keep it from being cut down. And she lived on a little wooden, eight foot wooden plywood platform in, um, in the tree. And so if you were to live in a tiny space, what would you put in it? Would you have a bed? What kinds of things would you want up in your tree house? So this is a top down view of that. Okay, I'm gonna just go through a little quicker if I can. Um, we have kids make a poster based on the uh, Federal Theater Project's um, performance of production of Revolt of the Beavers, which is an exceptionally incredible play that was called out for by the House Un-American Activities Committee. Um, we have kids uh, make a living newspaper game. This one is one of the ones for kids that don't like to um, do art as much. It's, it is still creative though. You cut these cards out and you research current news stories. Um, we give you some, you can use the Week Junior if you have that magazine subscription, or you can use um, a, an online news source. And kids would write headlines on the backs of these cards and then um, try to act out the news stories in the same style that some of the Federal Theater Project's plays were done. Okay. Uh, G is for the Great Law of Peace. So we learn about 
Todd Adajo's transformation in that story um, and invite kids to draw before and after he was transformed. Um, here's an engineering project that kids who don't like to make art might enjoy. Um, we say in the teacher's note for this one, if you don't want to go through this whole process, but you still, this is, if you still want to demonstrate the same lesson that uh, was in our chapter and is the goal of this page, you can just go out and use sticks instead of fashioning your own arrows. But it's the idea that um, it's easy to break one arrow, but if you have a bundle of five arrows, you can't break them. And that's the idea of we're stronger when we are united. Um, and we invite them to make a symbol of peace based on um, a lesson in that, in that chapter too. Spotlight, oh, okay, H is for Hull House. Um, I really enjoyed this lesson a lot too. I'm not sure, okay, yeah, you can kind of, my lighting's not great here, so you're seeing a lot of the the H on the back side of this, but um, Hull House was one of the first settlement houses in the United States, I think the first, and it was the idea of working in solidarity with communities in need instead of the popular model of charity at the time. And um, so the women, women who ran Hull House in, in learning what their community needed, developed a whole children's house. So this idea is, a, you can see it's sort of like a dollhouse frame. And if you were going to make a children's house, what would you put in each room? This was an activity that the kids did. So many cool ideas. There were slides from room to room. There was a room that was just heaped with mac and cheese. You know, like what would you, dreaming big, how would you design uh, a children's house? Um, also, Hull House had one of the of Chicago's very, and they were very new idea in America, first playground. So you can invent a playground um, and draw whatever whatever things you want in yours. Um, here's an activity for kids that don't like to draw as much. Um, we talk about how Jane Adams, who started Hull House, she inherited money, um, and she used that to make her dream a reality. And so if you had the same amount of money, what she inherited then would be worth 1.5 million today. If you had that amount of money, think about a budget for what you would buy with it to do some good in the world. Um, and so the budget activity that kids love. <laughs> um, I liked this, um, the ideas for further research for this one is based on the um, concept of adventure playgrounds. So once kids have done the um, playground design activity, they could go a little bit deeper and watch a video about why safe playgrounds aren't as good as adventure playgrounds that involve some calculated risks. Um, and they can go through their design and see, did you include um, ways for kids to take some of these calculated risks? And if not, how can you change your design to make the playground more fun? Okay, and there's our spotlight. I is for independent living. So this one, Helen was just talking about this in a TikTok because it was just the anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act that was passed in 1990. And um, this chapter is a really great way to learn about that. And also Judy Human just died this spring. Um, so it's really great to learn about her work at this time. Um, we invite kids to make a drawing of all kinds of bodies. This was basically, um, I say in the notes in the teacher pages, this was inspired by Tyler Fetter's book, um, Bodies Are Cool, which would be a great um, book to incorporate into this uh, learning week also. But draw as many different kinds of bodies um, with as many different kinds of features as you can, jumble them all up in the page, have them in a crowd. Um, you get some really cool results from the kids doing that. This one is, uh, what's wrong with this picture? So we show you a couple of buildings and think about um, them from the perspective of uh, people with disabilities. How would they, what obstacles would they encounter if they tried to access these spaces and how could you fix them? Um, yeah. 
This is a scavenger hunt idea, um, looking for things that were introduced in the ADA. And um, so you will need to actually get out and move around, um, take a walk or a wheel around your town or city or school um, or some area close to you and see if you can find these things and um, see if they're working because that's important too. We have included a couple of lessons that are modified after um, a wonderful documentary that is probably too mature for most students, but they have a great resource section that we link to in the teacher pages for educators. Um, but it's thinking about who has the power. Um, and uh, that's something that's a really important theme in the chapter and that helped um, helped the, the uh, Ed Roberts and Judy Human and others um, reclaim their power, even, even though they were um, in a wheelchair and in Ed's case could only move two of his fingers. And when do you feel powerful? That's another worksheet. Here's our coloring page for Judy Human. So yeah, like I said, she just, she just died this spring. So I love the idea of kids learning about her this year. Okay, J is for jazz. I'm 19 minutes in. Am I going way too slow? Probably I've lost a lot of you, but I might just keep going for those of you that really care about seeing the whole thing through. Um, we learned about a group, the first um, integrated teenage uh, rock, uh, not rock, jazz band, jazz ensemble, toured the country in their bus, um, which they call Big Bertha. So we invite kids to decorate color in a custom tour bus and then they cut it out and it tells you where to glue and you uh, have a 3D model of a cool Big Bertha tour bus. We have a cutting contest which is based on the jazz cutting contest but this is an art version um, that's really fun or you can try the musical when we explain that to you too. Um, both of those I feel like even kids who don't generally like art might enjoy the engineering, structural, um, and competitions in, in that section. Here's Louis Armstrong. Okay, our K is for Korematsu um, lesson is, is one of my favorites. Um, so Korematsu, uh, as you maybe probably knew, um, fought against the racist incarceration of Japanese Americans in World War II. Um, he uh, sued with this Supreme Court case and he did he lost um, but his daughter started an institute after he died I think that um, is dedicated to teaching students about civil liberties which is what Fred Korematsu was fighting for in his court case and so our activities are designed to teach students about their civil liberties just like Fred Korematsu's institute does today. Um, so we examine some Supreme Court cases that students have taken against um, authority and that made it to the Supreme Court. One is Tinker v. Des Moines that um, allowed kids to uh, express themselves politically in schools. Um, that Tinker kids wanted to wear peace armbands um, to fight, to be a vocal opponent of the war. And uh, so you can design Kids can design miniature versions of armbands that they could strap around a stuffed animal or doll. Or you can make, um, if that's too young for your kids, they could make a full size or even a cloth armband um, that uh, is about a cause that's important to them. Um, Gilman v. Holmes County is another Supreme Court case where one principal um, in Florida was uh, banning kids from wearing anything that might be considered um, pro-LGBTQ, including anything with a rainbow on it. So uh, we have a vi video in the teacher pages where you can see, see that principal talking about, you know, why he would rule out the Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon album cover t-shirt because there's a rainbow on it and things like that. But Gilman v. Holmes, the kids won, and kids today now have the right to wear whatever they want. So decorate a rainbow or pride themed outfit in celebration of that, or decorate an outfit however you want. We included from the ACLU 
students' rights notes because we found in our own class that kids got really fired up learning about their rights. They especially love talking about dress codes and what they have the right to wear and not wear in, in spaces in public schools. Um, yeah, and here's Fred Korematsu. Okay, Ellis for Libraries. We learn about Pora Belpre's uh, wonderful book, Pores in Martina. Um, and it's a great story. If you don't know it, that's a, a love story between a beautiful cockroach and all the suitors who want to marry her. So we invite kids to make their own unique love story because um, our beautiful cockroach lady ends up with Perez, who is a little mouse. And so make your own beautiful but unusual couple. Um, that's the cover of your own little story. Oh, and we say too, uh, Pora Belpre uh, was a famous puppeteer. So if you get really inspired, you might turn your characters into puppets also. Um, we learn about some of the many novel ways, that's a <laughs> bad pun, I apologize, um, that people have shared books in America um, from the Pack Horse Project to bookmobiles and we invite, and to Little Free Libraries today. So we invite kids to design their own cool way to share books here. Um, yep. Okay, Emma's for March. This is a really long chapter, um, but it's a, obviously a really important one. It's important marches through American history. We start by learning about a, a march for suffrage in 1913, and we ask kids to, I, boy, I just saw I'm at 25 minutes. I might have to stop here at M and I've only, yeah, we'll just stop it. This will be our last one, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, I think M is a good place to stop. But uh, for the suffrage march, um, the person that was at the leader of the, the leading the parade, Inez Mulholland, um, she wore a gold crown, had a long white cape, she rode on a white horse, and she carried a beautiful banner that said, forward into light. And we loved the visualization of that so much um, that we did like sort of like the make your own sport idea uh, from the B is for Black Lives Matter section. You'll need to roll a six sided die and you'll have a headwear, something to wear on your head and access. So she had a gold crown, um, something to wear uh, that's a fun accessory like her white cape. Um, we give some options. What are you riding on? She was on a white horse, but what are you riding on? And then the three words of your sign instead of forward into light maybe yours is leap upon tacos um and you can make a really weird fun leader of your parade okay we learn about hoovervilles in this chapter two as part of the bonus army march and hoovervilles um were the housings camps that were sprung up in cities to house people who had lost their homes and jobs and didn't have um, a place to live. Full families lived in them and they were made with whatever materials the people could find. Um, you know, scraps of tin, cardboard, scraps of wood, pallets, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. So in that spirit, we invite kids to make on this, this is a grid of a city. These are the little streets. So like this would be like a block. Make a make a tiny three-dimensional house out of stuff that you find around you or in your recycling bin um, that is a, the smallest Hooverville because we'll learn about the biggest Hooverville that was in Washington, D.C. as part of this march and protest. We learn about um, Birmingham, Alabama, which uh, and the march, the marches that were protesting the segregation there. Um, and that was America's most segregated city at the time. And so much violence happened there as a result of that segregation um, that the city was nicknamed Bombingham. And so we invite our artists to make an, an artistic interpretation of what a city of, called Bombingham would look like. So I am almost at the 30 minute mark, which is, I think we can all agree, definitely too long and probably most of you have dropped out before that but let me um put my camera around to say one farewell to you okay thank you so much for hanging in there with me as i rambled my way through half of our 
workbook, um, but I hope that it's given you a good sense of what is in our curriculum. And if you have other questions or if by, for some reason you would like to hear me ramble on through the second half of this curriculum, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to put my face in front of this camera again. So that's Power of the People. Uh, let me hold it up again. Thank you so much for checking it out. Bye.